Okay. Hey, I'm Sid and I'm with Dr. Akhilesh, uh, who is an FY2 doctor in Oxford and he's going to be answering some of the questions that I've been asked on Instagram. So the first question is, what was your defining moment when you knew uh, you want to be a surgeon? Um, so the defining moment for me was definitely in third year. So this was something which I've mentioned in our bigger video which you've got up. Um, it was during my third year placement in actually cardiology in Ashford. Uh, as part of that rotation, I took it upon myself to explore different surgical specialties which I was interested in. Um, and during that time I went to theatre in orthopaedics. So Ashford has a, quite an interesting and very inclusive orthopaedic unit filled with very warm and welcoming characters. So um, I got to know quite a few of the consultants and they got me stuck in. So they, I was having to you know, retract and debride and I got to put in a few screws and some DHSs. And at, at the stage of third year, doing those simple things like suctioning, stapling, diathermy, retracting, putting in some screws, that was just the most amazing thing for me and I, and I think that really drew me in and I mean it's, from an outside perspective it sounds a bit silly oh you're just basically holding holding a leg or you're basically just you know buzzing buzzing an artery but when you understand the anatomy behind it and when you understand why someone is doing something I, I think that's just the most rewarding thing that you, you could potentially be doing and again, time just flew by. So at the start of the start of the list, you're sort of looking at the clock and then end of the list, you're like, oh, what? what? Two hours have just gone by. Like, that's just insane. Um, because you're so fixated on, on what you're doing. Um, and again, I, I can't think of, you know, a better specialty to sort of be getting into than, than, than surgery. Okay, wow, that's quite a thoughtful answer. Um, next up is about the MRCS. Um, so there's two questions. One is when is the best time to take the MRCS part A and how did you prepare for the MRCS? So I think with both of the exams, when you set them is very much dependent on the kind of person you are and the kind of rotations that you have coming up. So, I mean, I personally did my MRCS part A during my um, sort of my first block of rotations. So I did it during my general surgery rotation which in hindsight was an exceptionally busy rotation to do it, do it during. That said, it is possible to do it during a busy rotation as long as you're able to prepare and you know what you need to prepare. Um, so part A, again, like I said, it can be done whenever you wish to do it. So I know some people who've sat in F2, I know some people who've sat in sur core surgical training, but um, the overwhelming advice that people will give you is do it early, do it early as possible because it just frees up all that extra time that you spend studying for it to do things like operating and to do things like, you know, getting publications and getting other exposure. So the exams are definitely a hurdle that is, you know, the sooner you get done, the better. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of preparing for the part A, um, there are certain um, textbooks and certain resources that you can use. Um, so one resource which I have in front of me, which I'll just get out now, is this book here, mm -hmm. which is basically Basic Science for the MRCS um, by Rafti. It's something which most people tend to use, um, and it's something which forms a very basic and very um, solid guide for doing the question banks from. Okay. So ultimately, the main thing that I used to prepare for for the Part A exam were the question banks. So I used EMRCS, and I used, um, and I used past test. Okay. So I use both of them. I know some people have used one, some people have used the other one, some people have used neither. Um, but for me, I, I definitely wanted to be as prepared as I could. So I did EMRCS two to three times before the exam. Yeah. And I did pass test once over before the exam, uh, as well as making notes from the Rafferty book. So how long in total would you say you spent preparing for yeah, this? Yeah, so, so over, overall prep time for part A, I would say I spent six months sort of initial initial period sort of initial one or two months very very like calm not really much you know doing a couple of hours a week if that 
um, and then sort of in the in the month or two before it really going full steam and doing it as many hours as I could. Um, definitely in the in the in the coming in the weeks before it, I would be doing questions at work. So I would if I had a free minute at work, if I had free five ten minutes, even at lunch, I would be doing questions. I'd be on my phone doing EM, EMRCS. Yeah. Um, and it's something which you can do quite sort of on the down low. You don't really have to advertise that oh look at me i'm out here studying you can just you know pretend you're texting or something but actually you're just doing these questions right um and and you know i think that's a great way of revising i think especially for me my brain is like a sieve i remember things and then i forget them the next second so having that sort of continuous sort of repetition of information is is tremendously helpful and that comes through the question banks um the next question is um i think this is related to the full core surgical training um, application how prepared were you and what did you find the hardest um so for the core surgical training application i prepared um using uh, my portfolio so putting together the portfolio is probably the most time consuming thing that that will take place for you during that period okay. um obviously you just have the checklist there buy a nice portfolio online most people have it sort of with their name on it so you know do that because 99 percent of people will um make sure you've got really nice glossy wallets to put all your certificates and everything else in okay. um so that was obviously one side of it and the other aspect was the management and clinical um, stations so for that i use a generic interview um, practice guide which is basically you can it's on amazon um, it's a similar guide to the sort of the Kaplan ones that you we did for um, sort of uk cad and things like that um, but there's sort of a generic one i think it's called 100 plus questions for um, for interviews for okay. medical interviews so i, I use that and then I went on a lot of practice courses. So I think I must have gone on about three, three courses in the, in the weeks in sort of month or two prior to the interview. And I think that was probably the best revision I could do for it. So you really having that sort of face-to-face -face involvement with, um, with, with the trainer was, was a really good way of getting practice for them. Fine. Um, the next question um, is, so, okay. oh, so I think there was another question to that. I think what was the biggest hurdle? Really? Yeah, what did you find the hardest? Um, the hardest with anything um, after sort of medical school, um, and I think it's something which you only really appreciate once you're in F1, is time. Yeah. So time is extremely limited, and the effort you put in has to be sort of double the effort you would put in as a medical student, because you come back home, you've done a long day of work, you've had to do like a million things at work, and then you still have to find the energy somewhere to eat and then to study for an additional like couple of hours and I think that's the biggest thing um, there's no sort of revision break you don't get like a couple of weeks off prior to exams where you can just study it's you have to incorporate it into your day-to-day -day life okay um, and then you mentioned something about the portfolio so the next question is related to that um, what are your top tips for maximizing points in the portfolio um, top tips yes so I would def top tip number one read the checklist so i think reading the checklist is probably the biggest tip i could give anybody um read the wording read how it's phrased read what you need for the maximum points um second top tip would be buy a really nice folder um like i said a lot of people will have super nice folders so you know having something that you know really shows that you're proud of your work looks really good okay. um prepare the management um speech as soon as you can so as soon as you have the title out just you know get some ideas down um you can ask friends and colleagues who sort of sat the exam before to uh, sorry the interview before to sort of give you an idea of what they'd put if the questions are similar um and then you can sort of build up on the speech from there so i would i would say those are, would be my top tips fine um the next question uh there's there's two and it has to do with surgical exposure so one is how do you make the most of surgical rotations in med school and as an F1? And two is what tips would you have for gaining surgical exposure during F1, F2 posts? So I think it's just about surgical exposure during F1 and med school. Sure. So um, two parts. So as, as, a, as a medical student, I would say you don't have to be on a surgical rotation to get surgical exposure. Um, I think some of my best moments in theatre as, as, a, as, a, as a sort of medical student were 
happened when I wasn't on um, that rotation. Um, and I think it's really important to sort of hammer home the point that with anything that you do in surgery, a lot of it is going to come in your extra own time. Um, I, I feel for medical jobs, even on, at a postgraduate level, you can do a medical job um, during your day-to-day -day activity and that ticks the box of you know having that medical exposure but especially for surgeons and, and for aspiring surgeons you have to go above and beyond you have to find the time to go to theater you have to find the time to have that certain case or that certain clinic or that certain sort of pathology thing that you've seen um, and that again is reflected whilst you're a medical student so you know if you're on your I don't know, cardiology firm, go to cardiothoracics. If you're on sort of your MSK firm, go go on your um, you know, trauma and orthopedic uh, ward. Um, so it really is what you make of it. And um, something which I did, which again is going to sound extremely geeky, is um, I think in my fourth year, in my fourth year summer, I had um, just a sort of the first week or two of my fourth year summer, I just came to St. Thomas's. I went to the um, uh, operating theatres and I was like, oh, hey, I'm a medical student. I started summer. I have, I have this free time. Can I come to theatre? Because you may have summer holidays, but surgeons don't. Um, you know, we're obviously doctors are working 24-7. So I that was a really good experience for me because I got to go and see um, Miss Jenny Gay, who's one of the... Um, uh, plastic surgeons at St. Thomas's and she really she didn't have any registrars for that week which was amazing because it was me and her and she let me do like some of the stuff which her registrars would do I got to give local anesthetic agent under her supervision which was really really a big deal for like a third year or fourth year um, and I got to sort of you know help excise um, skin cancers and things like that which was really really cool um, so again free time is a, is a big one and as much as you feel like you don't have much time as a medical student, trust me, you have way more time as a medical student than you do as a doctor. Okay. Um, and second part of that, what do you do? What can you do as a foundation year doctor to maximise your surgical exposure? It will be obviously have a surgical placement. Um, it's very unlikely that you can do what I just said um, that you can do as a medical student. It's very unlikely that you've got one job and then you say, oh yeah, when I have free time, I'll go to theatre or do whatever in a different speciality. Because one, you don't really know the team like that. The dynamic as a, as a, as a junior doctor is very different. Um, you won't have that much time apart from war jobs to go to theatre. Um, and it's, so it's really important that you do have surgical jobs. It's important that you have this sort of rapport with your seniors and you're able to get in and be friendly with your seniors who will then encourage you to get to theatre. And it's important that you find time in between ward jobs to get to theatre. So do a ward round really quickly, um, sort of go through all the jobs really quickly, have a colleague who can hold the bleep whilst you go to theatre or take the, take the bleep with you. So when I was on trauma, there was there was a time when I was on ortho jerrys. I was the only one holding the bleep. So I would do all the jobs that needed to be done for the afternoon. I would go around to both wards where the nurses were. I would say, guys, I'm going to theatre. If there's any jobs, tell me now. I won't be available for the next next hour. Obviously, bleep me if there's like an emergency in a patient deteriorating. Otherwise, like just tell me what to do. If there's anything that needs to be prescribed, or prescribe it now, um, or sort of just let me know after I've at, after I'm out of theatre. So that was that was a really handy thing that I personally did. Um, and the last question that I have for you um, is from Melissa, and it is: If you went back to medical school, would you do anything differently, and why? Um, as cheesy as it sounds, I don't think I would do anything differently. Um, I absolutely loved my time at King's. I think I was very fortunate. I had a really, really good uni experience. Um, I was able to, um, surprisingly enough, balance both sort of work and play. Um, obviously, I know you said through sort of sports and sort of like cricket and like other sort of social things. So, I mean, obviously there is time for that. Um, and I think genuinely it's important to know that it, there's always a balance. Like at King's people used to say work hard, play hard. So, I mean, I definitely think with anything that you want in surgery or in medicine, um, you have to have that attitude where you have to know when to have fun and you have to know when to knuckle down. Um, so I, I don't think I, I can honestly say touch wood, don't regret anything that I've done. Okay. Yeah, that's great to hear. Um, those are all the questions from uh, Instagram. 
Uh, thank you so much again, uh, Akash, for all your time. And Thanks I wish you all the uh, best luck with um, your core surgical training and beyond. Thanks very much.